All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we'll continue with our topic, but you know we can switch any time, any moment, uh, depend in the uh, the moods of the customers, and the customers in this scenario is the Muslims, Abdul. So if you are a Muslim and you feel that you have something to say about your religion, if you think you are not being fair, describing your cult, please give us a call and uh, give us the refute. So we were talking about the wife of Allah and how Allah described his wife to be one of ourselves, which means one of our kind. And that obviously <clears throat> a clear proof that Islam is a very, um, you know, confusing religion. One hand, they say to us, Allah is one God. And yet Allah, if you want to have a wife, she have to be very sexy and she had to be very beautiful from the virgins in the heaven. And maybe she is riding a bicycle right now. Uh, as we see in the screen in the beach of Allah and that is supposedly is the wife of Allah from ourself so she is from the kind of Allah which means the virgins which Allah he promised the Muslims they are not a human they are from the kind of Allah so how that can be we wait maybe a Muslim can give us a call and he can answer us however based on my experience I never saw a Muslim can answer anything not Allah, not his messenger, not his people. They can answer anything. And be my witness, here we go. We will be here for some time today. And we will see if Allah will send us some of his followers who can, he can use them to open their mouth and he speak in them. You see the true God, the true God, he use his obedient servants he used them to speak for him. Mm -hmm. That can Allah do the same? No way. And one of the proof of that <clears throat> that the Muslims always agree about disagreeing about the meaning of a verse. So if the Muslims they have one God, how come they have a millions of meaning for the same verse? And why the Muslims agree about not to agree about what the verse mean? This is the only agreement Muslims they can reach. We agree about not to agree what this verse mean. I never heard of a Muslim he agree with anything with other Muslim. And you see that every day, every day we show the Muslims what their scholars they say. I say I don't agree. Hmm? Not only they don't agree with their uh, uh, scholars, they don't even agree with their prophet. We show them what their prophet said in the hadith. We say, say we don't agree. Uh, who said that I don't accept hadith? Suddenly, his prophet is not qualified to be a witness for Islam. Hmm? Do we have any Muslim would like to give us a call? Guys, don't forget to share the link. I did not share anywhere because uh, we just started the podcast again. I wanted to keep the first video. And don't forget, please, to download the first video or share it with your friends, etc. So uh, people will know that we are live. The posts around, join us, join us live. Email. Okay. Now. Let us post around, please. <clears throat> and tell people that we are here. We are here to stay, my friend. We are here to stay. Islam will go. Islam has many cults. They might grow, they might shrink. It doesn't matter. There was before Islam bigger cults than Islam, and they, they are gone. And Islam no different. It's going to go. And actually, Islam is a changing, you know, uh, because Islam is not a true uh, a belief. Islam is a changing. So like you see now, uh, the Muslims, they try to, to, to make a new religion out of Islam. So uh, you will see Muslims who say uh, we are Quran only. Uh, you say Muslims who say no, we are Salafi. You see Muslims, they have even a new Messiah. Uh, they have a Muslims, even they have a new Mahdi. They have Muslims, they have a new Muhammad. They have Muslims, even they have a new Quran. So every, you know, there is endless number of Muslims trying to, to create a new Islam because the original Islam does not answer their questions. It does not fit with 2018 so what we do we try to find a way 
we try to get away from it by fabricating a new religion maybe this a new religion if we update it it can survive but mm, you cannot do that because all the cults you are creating is coming from a cult anyway which means garbage in garbage out when we speak about garbage the only way to make something good of it is recycle and how you can recycle Islam you tell me how you can recycle religion the God of the religion is saying if I want to have a wife I'm going to have sex with women from our kind and those women are the virgins in heaven hmm now that can be I mean this is really mad this is really stupid we have a God not only he says stupid science stupid histories even names he cannot quote them correctly you see English is my second language so sometimes if I'm reading English uh, there's a there's a word I never said before so I'm not sure really how to pronounce it I might make a mistake but this is me as a human but God he say such a thing that's really amazing stupid God supposedly he knows what he's talking about he is not like a, a person like a human being okay I never pronounced this word before so I do not know how to say it Quran is a book of errors mathematic or errors grammar errors pronunciation errors history errors science errors dates error I mean everything in this book is an error and here we go we are here challenging the Muslims to call us <clears throat> No, this is not me in the picture. This is my uh, one of my future wives because I'm thinking to convert to Islam and I will buy four bicycles. All right. Actually, I need, I need five. One for me too. Four bicycles <clears throat> and I will buy a stick and then I will chase those my wives in the beach. So all of us and they will wear burqa. <clears throat> you know, we are moderate Muslims. We are moderate Muslims. So I will not allow them to go like this wearing this clothes. No. She will wear burqa see-through, so you can see her bum and you can see her breast, but still she is wearing burqa because we are moderate Muslims. And this is one additional thing we hear these days. It's a clear sign of Islam is dead. Because when they say to you, I am a moderate Muslim, he's trying to say to, to you what? If there is a moderate Christian, what moderate Christian mean? Christian is a Christian. Either you are, you, either you are following Jesus or you don't believe in Jesus. Moderate Christian does not exist. Moderate Muslim simply is someone saying to you, you know what? Islam is a stupid. I'm going to have a moderate version of it. And it is my design. It's a modern design. That's really stupid. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, uh, Cole. He's saying... He's trying to say, I am not a Muslim like the rest of the Muslims. I am a moderate Muslim. I don't belong to the Islam, the one you know. Islam, the one you know, is a stupid. I don't belong to it. This is what moderate Muslim mean. Islam, the one you know, is terrorist. Islam, the, way, the, the one you know, is about killing and hate. I am a moderate Muslim. I'm not a hateful person. I am not a killer. This is what he's trying to say. He is trying to wash his hands from the true Islam by saying, I am a moderate. But I wonder if we have a moderate Quran. Do the moderate Muslim read moderate Quran? As long as you are reading the same book of hate, kill them wherever you find them, cut their fingertips, you know, uh, cut their head. Uh, kidnap them rape their women so how you can be a moderate Muslim what does that mean it is just a hypocrisy you know it's like just like changing your skin from outside uh, and inside still you are full of this garbage but he don't want to be the same Muslims as before he don't want to be the original Muslim like it's not only change the skin he changed inside too trying to make himself believe that now I am not the same as Bin Laden, not the same as the Fethi Muhammad, not the same as the horny Aisha. The horny Aisha who raped the Prophet at the age of, of six. I mean, how disgusting those women there. You see the kuffar, 
They say the Prophet did rape Aisha at the age of six. The fact it is the opposite. It was our beloved Prophet Muhammad. He was a victim of Aisha. She was so horny and she was so mature and she was so hot to the point she could not keep it in her pant. She took the Prophet to a private room and he have no idea what she is planning for and she asked him to show her uh, his, uh, you know, and if he do it, she will give him some candies. The Prophet he did, but he was not aware of the evil plan of Aisha. And then Aisha, she did what she did to the Prophet. <clears throat> All right, somebody is asking me. Look like we are going to change the topic. Somebody is asking me this. <coughs> uh, let me pose the question on the screen. All right, the question is saying, and let us show you. CP, can you explain this miracle in the Quran about the two ocean meeting and not mixing and how to refute it? My friend, nobody can refute this. This is amazing miracle in the Quran, so beautiful and amazing to the point I feel like I want to go right now and uh, drink honey. Anything the Muslims they say to you about miracles in the Quran, I assure you, it is a lie and as long you ask me this question I have to answer you now let us do it and my friend <clears throat> if you want to know how we refute Muslims about their book I say to you go and buy my CD which is you know the CD I made lately uh, I don't know if you know it I made a CD uh, 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 teaching you uh, simply uh, like uh, I mean the method of doing things and I called the CD uh, this is how we do it you know no refute 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 So today we are going to show you life on air with no hesitation that the Muslims they lie when they say even goodbye even their goodbye is not a goodbye it's a lie let us get them busted so they say to us <clears throat> that the Quran says let us switch to Arabic In chapter 55, verse number 20, it says, Yusuf Ali, between them, between them is a barrier which they do not transgress. You see, we have always to use our brain. I did not even go yet, but I will show you how easy you can prove the Muslim to be lying. You see, they say to you that salty water and fresh water don't mix. That's an absolute lie. Science doesn't say that. Salty water and fresh water mix very easy. Same as any water. The only difference is that it takes time for that to merge together. A little bit time more than normal. But otherwise, you can put some salt right now. Uh, get a cup of salt water, half cup of salt water. And half cup of a fresh water and put them together. Do they mix? What is the answer, guys? Do they mix? They mix. You can do it right now. The verse here saying they never mix. They don't. Do you see it clearly? It says they do not transgress. Do you see it? I'm not the one translating. This is the Muslim translation. 
So the statement here in the Quran about things they will never ever ever mix. It doesn't matter how much you try, they will never even get close to each other. And this is how easy to get the Abdul busted. Now we are not done. Did we say we are done? I did not say that because we did not show you yet. We did not even start to show you what to show you how we do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Let us do it, my friend. Live on air, get the Abdul busted. A chapter 55, verse number 20. I'm not going to give you interpretation for the verse. I will go and see the interpretation of the scars of Muslims. And I challenge the Muslim to say that those scars, they work for a Christian prince. Obviously, they do. Chapter 20, 55, verse number 20. Be careful, huh? The chapter of Ar-Rahman. We go. All right. Tafsir. Ibn Kathir, chapter 55, 55. By the way, just to tell you something about we as, Ara as Arab, we are the first people in the world who discover that number 55 come before number 56. Just take a note about that. Before that, nobody knows. So now, chapter 55, verse number 20, let us see what this verse means. All right, as you see, I'm not giving you interpretation of the Quran. I'm giving you what the Muslims believe about the Quran. So take a note, please. And if you don't like to take a note, take a hike. Now, I told you, we will show you how to do it. Marjul Bahraini Yal Taqiyan. He has Maraja. The two seas. First of all, this is a mistake in the Quran. The stupid Muhammad, he believed that the fresh water is a sea of water and the salty water is a sea of water and they don't mix, which means this is not a miracle of science. This is a stupid science because Muhammad, he believed that Quran saying, according to his God, that there's two waters they never mix. One is a fresh and one is salty and they are two seas, not one sea, not one body of water. Continue. Or let them lose, according to Ibn Abbas, Allah, Yaltaqiyan, meeting together. Ibn Ziyad said, he prevent them from meeting by dividing barrier he placed between them to separate them. Should we play? This is how we do it. Mm -hmm. Barrier. 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 So, Abdul, there is a barrier between them. There is what? There is a barrier and they will never, ever, 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 ever meet together. So what the Muslim tried to fool you, saying to you, that the water is mixing together, however, it's touching each other, as if they are, let us say, uh, dancing uh, a salsa, you know, it's like a salsa dance, but it is not really uh, together because they are not a mixing. But this is not the scenario. The two seas, the fresh and the salty water, the forming, the form come from running rivers. We discuss this topic, Surat Al Ghufran, when we explain Allah's statement. هو الذي مرج البحرين هذا عذب فرات وهذا ملح أجاج وجعل بينهما برزخا وحجرا محجورة. Translation: 
and it is he who has let free the two seas no playable uh, and the sweet one is a playable and a sweet uh, which means salt one is a, uh, you know good to drink you know and sweet and the other one is salty and bitter and he has set a barrier and complete partition between them complete do you see the word complete chapter 25 verse number 53 now here we continue what is the barrier and now this is how we do it between them is a barrier which none of them can transgress none of them can transgress ever meaning he placed a barrier of land between those th these two type of water do you see it does it say there he placed a land between the two two kind of water so there is the barrier the word is barzakh barzakh means and only mean a piece of land going between two water So the Abdul, my friend, they did lie to you. The Quran here confirmed something stupid. That the God of Islam, he think that the salty water and the fresh water, they never mix. And that because the God of Islam is stupid because all the fresh water is coming from the salty water anyway. And not only they mix, they are a cycle of mixing. So what it is a mistake in the Quran, the Muslim tried to make it as a miracle. Do you see how they fool you? In order to debunk the Muslims so easy, don't forget to get my books, The Deception of Allah and Quran and Science and Death, where I did make them look like a joke with their miracles. Give it to your son, give it to your wife, give it to your family. You know, those books are very good to have if you're really looking for answers. However, I'm here. I mean, if you cannot uh, buy it, you see, but I'm not going to live forever. One day I'm going to die happily. And the Abdul, they will have a celebration and party. And they will say then, Allah killed him. <laughs> you know, any, anything Allah is, Allah is. So Allah, the smart Allah, he think, let me, let me, uh, let me use my art. You know, I am a very fantastic in arting. Hold on. Arting, did I say arting? I mean, where, where I get the word arting in English from? Eh. The, the Arab people are the first people who come with this word. Take a note. Arting. All right. Let me do some arting then, as long as we are talking about arting. So with the Muslims, I don't know, this girl will not make you concentrate with me. I better take her off. Hold on. Yeah, I think this is not, especially the Muslims, they will not even think about what I'm saying. They will not even consider for a second to think with this girl wearing her blah, 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 you know? We better get something else. <clears throat> okay. Let us see. Perfect. I found a picture. It can help us. Perfect. 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 This is a perfect picture. Seriously. All right. Look with me here. If you look in the screen, it looks like there's two kinds of water and they have different color. But by the way, this is just waves, you know, but we will use this picture just for the explaining. So the Muslims try to say to you, and they show you videos about, as an example, a river from the Delta. You know, rivers, when they are coming in, a, in an area, it's called Delta, which means where the river met with the ocean. They say to you, here, there's still water. It's fresh. They are not mixing. The fact, this is a lie. Because it's a river, always there is a new fresh water. It's not the same water staying, not mixing. You know what I mean? It's a river. It's millions of gallons of water coming nonstop. So always is going to be there is a fresh water there, but it is mixing. 
and this is not what science says and the Quran says it clearly that those two waters they never ever mix because between them there is two barrier so the Muslim they lie they say here if you notice there is two colors of the water why because they are not mixing here it is a fresh this is a fresh huh? and this is salty Hmm? And this is mentioned in the Quran when the Quran is speaking about something totally different. The Quran is speaking about thus those waters never ever ever mix together because there is a barrier, and that barrier is a piece of land. So if you go right now and read the verse, even in English translation, it says they never transgress, they cannot transgress. And this is not what the science speak about the salty water and fresh water. They mix. And I told you, you can go right now. Get half cup of salty water, half cup of fresh water, mix them together, and let us see if it's going to mix or not. Put them in a dish. Forget about the cup. Put them in a dish. Huh? Split the fresh water in the right side and the, and the salty water in the left side of the dish and try to drink from them. And let us see if it is going to mix or not. It's going to mix in the same second. What the Quran is speaking of, something totally different. The Quran is speaking about a stupid science Islam come with. And that science claim that it is a miracle of Allah. That fresh water is not mixing with salty water so we can drink. So the God of Islam, he understood this very wrong, for he is a stupid God. He is a stupid God. This verse actually not only proved to us Islam to be a false religion, proved to us many things. I'm going to show you this image here. <clears throat> This image is coming from NASA. Hey, by the way, I used to work uh, for NASA. This is what the president of Egypt, the previous president, he lied, and he said he used to work in NASA. But the guy don't even know how to speak English. Anyway, so here, let us see, make it big. The water cycle. The water cycle. The Quran is saying that those two waters they don't transgress, they never met. Because the Quran is stating that the fresh water is totally and always separated from the salty water. However, this is not a miracle, this is a stupid teaching proving Islam and the God of Islam to be a false God. For the water of the ocean come from here. This is the ocean. The sun will heat the ocean. And then the water will vibrate and go up to the sky. And then that will form the cloud as we see. That is the cloud. All right, and this cloud is simply the water, the steamed water, who is getting together in the sky, forming a kind of a shape, but it's not physical yet. It is just in the stage of uh, steam. And then this uh, uh, cloud will move to different location by the wind. The wind will push it. And then it's going to meet with a colder air. And when this cloud meet with the colder air, that will come down either as a snow, as we see here, or as rain. That is the bend, how cold the air is. And then this water come down as a river. And then goes first, maybe inside the lake. Sometime it might stay in the lake until it's vibrated again to the sky, to the same cycle as a cloud. Or 
mostly most of it is going to end in the ocean again however all the water we have is coming from the ocean so the Quran not only speaking of uh, something not a true the Muslim themselves they are liars and fabricator when they say to you that this is scientific miracle it is the opposite so imagine how in this devilish religion how what is wrong and stupid suddenly became a miracle and the Muslim they spread videos and post it everywhere and by the way this is not the fault of the Muslims I explained hundred and thousand of time but you Christians are lazy you do not do what you do what you work to do what about now all of you you cut this video you download it and you share it with your friend so one of you later your son your daughter your cousin your friend your 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 co-worker will not be fooled by what it's called the miracles of Islam Muslims they can accomplish their lives only because nobody is fighting them and most of the time I find myself just fighting alone you find the women I saw uh, YouTube today is uh, always suggesting though because the, well, the second you watch one of them to see what's happening then he keep uh, you know YouTube keeps sending me uh, videos as suggesting a woman she is showing how her vacuum machine work how she clean her house for God's sake, I have 2,000 view and she have two millions. Two millions. She's wearing very short skirt. Showing you how to keep herself, her house clean. She bent over. All the horny dogs in the world, they see her panty. Two millions of views. I have 2,000. So if you care really to fight deception and lies, my friend, help me. I cannot do everything alone. You can make this video short video. You know, any topic, I answer it in my long video. You can download the video. You can record the screen. There's many ways to do it. Take it, load it again, make a channel, make money from it. I don't, I don't mind, you know, put commercial in it. Who care? Just do something good for the sake of God, for the sake of your family. So those people, they will not fool them. Imagine you have a youth son or daughter and they see those things, they will believe them. They don't speak Arabic. They don't have the knowledge. They are naive and they will get into their head. And this is the fault of who? It's your fault. It's not a fault of a child he is 17 years old even a man or a woman 30 years old they converted to Islam it is the fault of the society you go to the church the stupid false priest he don't dare to speak about Islam and not only that you ask him what do you think about Islam he give you a positive ideas that Islam worshiping the same God which is absolutely false we are in a war with the devil my friend the devil is not weak and his deception is strong and those who they call themselves warriors are few and this is the truth so as you see here this is can be used against Islam to prove Islam to be not from God if Allah is God should not say such a stupid thing that the salty water and the fresh water never ever met and again, I'm not the one who's saying that. Even in their own Quran translation for the verse, it says that. Right? <clears throat> Let us see. Stupidity is a disease, and how we can fight it if people love to be stupid. A woman with panty cleaning her room, 
2 million. I cannot even take the number from my head. 2 million views. Should I get a vacuum machine? I'm not sure. I mean, is that what is missing? I think this is what is missing in my teaching. I think because ah, I never thought about it. I thought I thought because she is wearing short skirt or etc. No. <laughs> now I get it. I need a vacuum machine and I will show people how I clean my room with the vacuum machine. That what will make two millions come to watch and listen. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we go here, <clears throat> chapter 25, verse number 53. You see, we are showing you all the verses speaking about that. You can read any translation you want. Let us go over them one by one. Actually, there's a website here. We can use that website. But we can do it here anyway. Chapter 25, verse number 53. All right. Do you see here it says a partition? That is forbidden to pass. Guys, does it say forbidden to pass? Does it say that? Or I'm fabricating things. It's forbidden. So why when a Muslim he tried to lie to us, we don't use the gift of God which he gave us, which is our brain. It says there it's forbidden to pass. They cannot. This is not what science is speak about the salty water and the, and, the, and the fresh water. They pass and they mix. It says it clearly it's a forbidden to pass. It's not allowed. Why? Because the stupid God of Islam, he thought, which is Muhammad, Akam Muhammad, he thought that the salty water is a water made by God separated from the fresh water. This is how when we dig a well in the ground, we find water. So obviously, according to him, this is, must be a fresh water separated from the salty water. And those, they are not mixed. This Muhammad, he cannot explain to himself how the salty water became a fresh. It's not, it's not impossible. You cannot make a fresh water, a so, uh, uh, salty water fresh again. Are you, are you getting the point of this verse? Anyone don't, don't understand? The stupid Muhammad, he is supposed to be smart now. He is telling us that there's two waters and they will not mix because there is no way for his understanding that the salty water will transform into fresh water. And the Quran confirm another mistake too. Let me show you. <clears throat> as long as we are talking about water and rain and etc. <clears throat> oh, Lord have mercy. Chapter 24, verse number 43. The Muslims here in this verse translation, they try to deceive us. And look what they say. Say it's though not Allah makes cloud move gently and join them together and then he make, then make them into he a hip. Then will the see rain issue forth from the Middle East? But, but the rain is not issued from the Middle East, uh, by the way. What Middle East? And he sent down from the sky mountain masses of a cloud wherein is hail it doesn't say that it's a big fat lie he just changed the whole verse meaning because the quran says that allah he sent hail from mountains in heaven not mass cloud you see how they fabricate if we go let me show you unbelievable Chapter 24, verse number 43. Uh, by the way, for the one who asked me about this thing, uh, let me share the link with you so you can get the Abdul Busted with Ibn Kathir interpretation. All right? This is about 
the two water are not meeting together I hope the link is working all right is it working uh, let me know if it is not working usually if this is not working that's because we did not say inshallah my friend you need to say inshallah in order to make the water the water not mixing all right all right now let us go uh, so a cha a chapter 24 verse number 43 we go to the interpretation You see, I'm not giving you interpretation of my own. For me, in Arabic, is so clear. But I will use what the Muslims believe. Whatever the Muslims believe, I will, you know, as it is. All right. Uh, Twenty-four, forty-three. All right. Let us see what this verse means. وينزل من السماء من جبال فيها من برد. He sent down from the main the main sky from mountains in it. <laughs> Do you see it? Some of the gra uh, grammarians said. That the first min subscribe the place from which coming, the second is specify from which part of the sky it comes, the third means some kind of mountains. This is based of the view uh, uh, of uh, on the views of those scholars of Tafsir. Let us see. From mountains in it of Minik means that there is there are mountains of hail in the sky which Allah sent down ice sorry guys I have an ice storm suddenly and now we found out where the ice is coming from I never thought, never, ever, ever thought that this God, Allah, he have a big storage of ice. He have like the North Pole up flying in the sky. And when he want to punish us, he break ice from that mountain and he hit us with it. Why the Muslim don't make a, a video about this amazing miracle? That God He sent ice from mountains in heaven. Huh? But do you see how they lie to you? They can lie to you as long you are a person who do not know. And when you do not know, anyone can fool you. Right? Where is the science? How, how do, don't tell me that the Muslim did not see that don't tell me that the Muslims after 1400 years written in their scholars books you see I'm not choosing my my scholars I can go to different scholar today the Muslims try to give false interpretation for those verses which is already established as meaning for 1400 years today are they are ashamed of the Quran so they start oh I don't go by a Ah, uh, I don't go by a Tabari uh, I, I don't go by a Jalalain I don't go by etc. Al Qurtubi. I don't go. It's not up to you. In Arabic, it says it clearly, min jibalin fiha min baradin. From mountains in it, it has ice. Hail, actually. The word barad here is hail, not ice. Which is, you know, at the end it's ice, you know, but we are talking about specific kind of ice. Hail. So my friend, don't consider Islamic answers about Islam 
as legitimate because I have long experience with this cult. I never saw one Muslim give me a true answer. The only Muslim who give a true answer is somebody is thinking to leave Islam. Or maybe he's from ISIS. If you speak to ISIS, they will say to you, yes, it says that. Because those people, they are in the suicide mood. They don't care. They don't care to uh, to fabricate, to make you believe or not. They want to force you to believe anyway. This is why in the early stage of Islam, the Muslims, they say that and nobody complained because who dare to complain? They were superior. So now the Muslim, they have a different, different stage. That we Muslims are not the we are not the most powerful country in the world, and we have a sword in the neck of everybody, and everybody complain. If anyone complain about the Quran or say one statement, we kill him. Before they are superior, who dare? Who dare to say this is rejected? Who dare to say this is not accepted? Who dare to say this is stupid? You remember yesterday I showed you a guy he came to Imam Malik and he asked him how Allah he the word is Tawa Tawa which mean he sat on the top of the throne what does Tawa mean how Allah he sat in the throne so the man he sweat he sweat he sweat he put his head in the ground he have a stick he is playing with the dust he do not know what to say after 15 20 minutes half hour he is sweating so hard he left his head up and he throw the stick so angry and he said to him how he stowa, which means how he went up and said, we do not know. What is the position? We do not know. How he do it? We do not know. Asking about it is a kufr. Asking about it is a, is a corruption. Get out of here. And he kicked the man away. So he, the man, he's a Muslim. He just asked, okay, how Allah? He did not say Allah is not God. He did not say Allah is not a, a, a true God. Or He didn't say, I don't believe in Islam. He's just trying to understand the verse. How he sat in the chair. The scholars, after squeezing himself for more than half hour, sweating like like a crazy, he told him that we do not know how, and we should not know how, and should not ask how. And anyone he asks how, he is bringing deception because they have no answer. Asking questions in Islam, my friend, is dangerous for Islam. As we see in chapter 5, verse number 101, it says, ask not questions. Ask not questions. Why? Hmm? Let us see. Let us see here. Stupid religion. Read with me. Oh, you believe, ask not questions about things which, if made uh, plain to you, may cause you trouble. But if you ask about things when the Quran is being revealed, they will be made plain to you. What does that mean? If we ask about things when the Quran is revealed, okay, Muslims, I challenge you, I challenge you to show me the interpretation of your Prophet Muhammad when the Quran is revealed. Do we have a book 
It's called the interpretation of the Quran by Prophet Muhammad. So what Muhammad is saying to them, don't ask me now, I have no answer. Why did not ask me when I did reveal the verse? <laughs> ask me when the verse is revealed. Now I do not know. I don't know what it means now. It's too late. I cannot ask Allah. What does that mean? In verse number one or two, it says, Some people before you did ask such questions, and in that account lost their faith. And the funny. Muhammad is making it as a sin if you ask to the point he says may Allah forgive you for asking those questions May Allah ask him forgive you This is a stupid religion and nothing in it is a qualified to be considered as a religion But you know how you can explain to the fool that they are fool He's a fool already. You know, a person who is infected by Islam is the same as a person who is suffering from drugs. So now he is high, and you want to tell him that drugs is wrong. You tell him, do you know that drugs is going to kill you? He say, uh-huh, yeah, uh, yeah. But drugs will kill you, my friend. It's going to destroy your brain. Ah, oh, brain, yeah, brain, yeah. Do you know what the drugs will do to your body? Uh, body, uh-huh. I have I have a buddy I, I did not see him for two weeks the drugs my friend is taking your money is taking your health is destroying your family our family yeah my my, my auntie she told me to, she will bring me some banana mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. he's high how you can explain to someone is high that it's wrong to be high That is Islam. Those people, they are fooled. And not only that, if you watch the videos in Arabic, the Muslim they make, it's full of lies, unbelievable. Uh, you know, you see, uh, uh, a Christian woman, she asked Zakir Naik, and you will not believe what was the answer. Yeah, what was the answer? Bring me Zakir Naik for 15 minutes. I will make him the shish kebab of Allah. You will not believe what the answer I know what I will not believe they are Zakir Naik if why the women in Islam she don't have uh, versions the same as a man what Zakir Naik he said and I know every Muslim he will not agree with this you know but Muslims as long as guys defend Islam they don't mind they don't say you're a liar they will never say to Zakir Naik you're a liar even he's lying so he said but the sitter the sitter they are with him how come in Islam only male they can have virgin hur. The fact is that the word hur, the word hur in the Quran, it is not male or female. It's a plural word for the word virgin, which means they never had sex before. Therefore, the Quran is promising all the believers that they will have hur. So in the Quran, never said that only male they will have hur. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. What? The Quran does not say that those are females. Are you sure? Are you sure? And the Muslims like, hey, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What is that, man? This guy is a genius. How he can do that? How he can do it? Abdul, Abdul. You know his line. All of you knows that those versions are a promise only for the Muslim men, and the Quran confirmed that. Ten thousand Abdul watching him live on the chairs, and not even one dare to say to him, "You are a scam." Hmm? Let us see the Hur in the Quran. حور مقصورات في الخيام. You see the word حور. Okay. I will go there.
Companions restrained in their gallons and a goodly whatever this is all fast you know, Okay, and look here what it says just the verse after it Just the verse after it. It says No man no genie did They see here they didn't touch them it doesn't say that it doesn't say that It says there is no man no genie did F them and make them a bleed from their vagina so how you say this is about plural name it's not about male or female if the verse after it says no man and or genie before them had sex with them and he if them and he made them bleed at uh, the word tomth the word tomth in arabic is either the period of the women when she have a period or when she lose her virginity as simple as that the man don't have tongue. If we go to any interpretation, any interpretation of your choice, you will see how easy to get those false liars busted so fast. 55, verse number 74. Let us do it. Do you see it? And by the way, this is a fast translation. It has changed the translation or the tafsir. Whom neither man nor jinn have touched him before, but before their husbands. But you see here the word touched him is not exist, it's a lie. And let me get it straight from the Muslims website. Okay, fifty five seventy four. Ibn Kathir. <clears throat> All right. Those women whom never were deflowered. Do you see the word deflowered? <laughs> Man, women, when they are not deflowered yet, they are so beautiful. Yesterday, I went to Amazon and I did search for women who they are not deflowered because there's women cafe with cafe, there's women with the cafe, there's women with cocaine, there's women with the heroin. Those are women. They are. They were never deflowered, and you cannot imagine how it feels so good if they are deflowered. I mean, it it make the man feel so happy when he make the women in pain. If there is any woman between you, she is not deflowered yet, please contact me immediately. Mayday, 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 mayday. We are looking for a woman, she is not deflowered yet. If there is any women around in the bushes, deflowered is needed immediately. If you are a deflowered woman, call us to our phone number 1 900 porn for Allah. Deflowered. <laughs> so Zakir Naik is a scam but none of the Muslims will dare to say he's a liar because he's defending Islam as long as you are defending Islam nobody will call you a liar as simple as that and you know what the beautiful thing about Islam that in the heaven your wives are like rubies
I mean, women like rubies. Hmm? Those women are like rubies. What what the heck does that mean? And Murjan and pearls? Like what? Hold on, hold on. Let me find one in this website. Let me find for you a ruby woman. Maybe we can find one. Maybe you can get a close. Hold on. We want to find for ruby women. Hmm. We can find ruby women now. I don't know. Allah will help me. Let's see if we can find ruby women. <coughs> Ruby women, where is the ruby woman? Ruby women, ruby. I don't know. This is ruby. I don't know what happened to her hair. I have no idea. Do you think this is a ruby woman? She looked like a witch. Maybe this is one of those ruby women. I I don't know. Don't ask me. I I madri. Madri, Madri. This is what? What? This is a religion. A God, He promised me women. They are jailed in their in my tent, waiting for me, and they have no panty, and they are ready for sex, and don't count to seven or eight because number the the one come before them is number six. Get ready for being horny for Allah. He promised me I'm going to have a lot of bing bing bamboni. I mean, this is an amazing religion of uh, harmony. What is that? Those women, not only my friend, not only their vagina have zero mileage. Are you listening? The vagina of those women have zero. Z Do you know what zero mileage mean? Zero. I mean, come on, let us be honest. Don't all of us we like to ride a car, have zero mileage? Hello. This woman, she never have a ride, according to Islam. She did not ride a man, and no man ride her. She has zero mileage. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> and then this woman, she looks so beautiful, like Ruby. And she looks so white, like... Pearl. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim have a comment? Any Muslim want to say something? Anyone have something to say? Who is a Muslim would like to give me a call? Why you want me to leave the call? Why? This remind you remind you of yourself that you need to 2,000 plastic surgery to have uh, to be beautiful Do you know guys that the first one in history who have a plastic surgery is Muhammad? Who is a Muslim he want to challenge me about that? The first one who had a plastic surgery is a prophet Muhammad Allah pray on him and salute him Who want to challenge me? I'm not joking. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. The one who cannot prove it, the one who can, cannot prove it, huh? he will lose one version from the 80,000. Let me put one version in the table. Hmm. A version, come, sit on the table. So who is the Muslim on a call me right now? If I cannot prove it, I will give you one of my versions. If you cannot prove me wrong, then you have to give me one of your versions, which you don't have. Any Muslim? By the way, what, how women they can get this color for their hair? What happened? I think she took she took a shower with methanol or something. I don't know what happened. Why? Why? How women they can do that? Unbelievable. Even James White don't have this hair. Do we have any Abdul would like to call? <clears throat> hmm? Anyone? 
I don't know. I'm trying to find out how she get this color. Or like, a, she, she took the shower with what? You tell me. Help me. I'm an Arab. I have no idea. We go to the we go to the grocery store. We say to them, I want to buy shampoo. You say what? I want to buy shampoo. What, uh, you mean shampoo? No, no, shampoo, shampoo. Okay, what kind? Shampoo. Uh, you want for the cats or for the dogs? Uh, no, shampoo. Yeah, yeah. There is shampoo for a human. There's shampoo for dogs, cats. What do you want for babies? Which one? No, I want shampoo. For us, all of it is shampoo. I don't know, man. Don't go on details. The same as the Quran. The second you go on details, things are screwed up. All what I know that this woman here, hair look really weird. So I'm asking, how the hair come like this? Did she take a shower with the Clorex, methanol? I don't know. Do we have any Abdul here? I have to be honest here. Islam is a very, it's a stupid religion, but sometimes it can very, very, be very funny. Very funny. Uh, as an example here, hold on. Oh, we still have this hadith here open. Man, I thought I closed this page. You see this guy, this, uh, this is the hadith we mentioned yesterday uh, about shaitan, he take care from the anus of Muslim when he pray. You know, this is here. You see the Muslim they speak about that the Muslims they face a lot of harassment a lot of harassment and a lot of discrimination and this is additional proof imagine there is seven billions human being in this earth shaitan only he target the anus of the Muslim men and women he come from their back and he take hair from their anus and look at this ugly disgusting shaitan he don't take hair from their under arm no from around their private part from the front no he take it from the anus specifically and who is the one who said that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam kana khabiran في شعري العانة The Prophet he have he have he have a you know he's certified he's certified in this area nobody speak about this area as much this Prophet did and he knew every details for everything happened to your anus it's like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he have a camera over the anus of every Muslim and he is watching closely what's happening So he come to us with description which is amazing that shaitan come from your back when you are praying you are bending down your ass is up You have no panty shaitan he jump he hold the hair from your ass and he straight it out I'm not putting a word from my own words. This is what the hadith saying in front of us I challenge the Muslim to call me say it's not true he straight the hair out. He, I mean, guys, did you watch the cartoon of Tom and Jerry? Once Tom, he have his uncle coming from Mexico. Anyone remember? His Mexican uncle, he is a mice like him. So he said, he sing like, Lord, and then the guitar line broke so now the uncle of the mice what he do he go and look for the cat when she is asleep and she and he take hair from her mustache bing this is exactly what the shaitan is doing unbelievable Unbelievable, man. Shaitan taking hair from your anus. I mean, this is not only proof that the prophet of Allah is a true prophet. It is beyond Discovery Channel. Let us put this hadith in Discovery Channel and let us ask those liberals, atheists, to make a program about it. They were not there. You know, they are cowards. The scientist from Japan, his name Yama Aidulai Yama Hashashuki Shuki Shukulai Yama, said 
that we discover after intense study that human being he lose a lot of hair which is unexplained around his ears and in order to find out why we install a very slow motion 10k not 4k camera made in Japan by Sony halal Sony and surprise surprise the scientist Yama I do Lai Yama Hosha Shuki Shuki Lai Yama found the following that there is a weird creature. His name, his first letter of his name is Satan. His last, last name is Iblis. I cannot tell you the whole name, for it is under research. He is standing behind special kind of people decent people the people of Allah and we found that he don't target the anus of someone he is a Christian or Hindu or Buddha or atheist or even a gay which is a very lawful target for Satan he target only the anus of a beloved follower of Allah I mean that's amazing that's amazing if you do not believe in the prophet yet you better believe immediately this is a prophet of God how many variety of guys look at this question I mean seriously look at this question this guy is asking me how many variety of Satan my friend don't you get it there's Satan who is in charge of the anus and his army there's Satan who is in charge in the vagina. There's Satan who is charging the penis. There's, don't you know that Satan, if you don't say inshallah, Satan, he will put himself around the penis of the man and he will be doing the women? See, in the kingdom of Satan, there is a specialty, my friend. Everybody have a certified career. They are they are divided already. Some they go target the anus, like in the every morning, Satan, Iblis, he met with his Satan, the small ones, the babies. Hey, Satan. The brigade for anus, are you ready? We are ready. Allahu Akbar, go. The brigade for vagina, are you ready? Hey, are you why you are sneezing? I but I was putting my nose yesterday in one of the vagina and I am sneezing. I have cold. I think she was a STD. So what do you mean, man? There's a lot of kind of shaitan in Islam. There's shaitan who sleep with Muslim women. There's shaitan who sleep with Muslim men. There's female shaitan. Actually, if we go in the Quran, look what the Quran says. I mean, guys, why you keep asking me questions? The more you ask me, the more it's very embarrassing for the Prophet and his God. <clears throat> Switch to Arabic. The search engine is funny. Whoa, 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 whoa. it's not coming. Ah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to find and look in the hadith. Sorry. It's my fault. It's my fault. Look at this. Look, look at this, man. Man. Look, 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 look. I'm really terrified. Guys, some of you ask me why I'm not married yet. Okay, let me tell you. Now it's time for the truth. It's time to face the truth. The Prophet of Allah, each time he go to the bathroom, he say, what he say? Where? In the bathroom. Where, where? In the bathroom. I hate to go to the bathroom, man. I hate it. Scary. Terrifying. I don't know what to say. I mean, sometimes I say to myself, like, do I need really to go to the bathroom? What if I do it in a dish? I mean, this is not even fair. Even the bathroom, there's a harassment for the Muslims. Even the bathroom. Why? 
why is that why there's no fear in this earth I mean a, a poor Muslim is going to the bathroom and what he want to do what he want to do he want to do poo poo I mean it's even poo poo even normal poo poo a poor Abdul he cannot enjoy he is under the harassment and he is going to face something scary so now you go inside the bathroom. You put your first foot in, and suddenly, after you take off your panty, You start feeling something behind you and you are not sure if it's a male female shaitan you will be lucky if it is a female if you are a man but it's going to be horrible if it is a male shaitan I feel dizzy I mean why why for the sake of Allah Allah created male shaitan and female shaitan have you ever heard of religion believe there is male shaitan and female shaitan huh I mean how cute how cute to have a visit from shaitan and his wife and his daughter Shaitan come to me once and he said to me Christian Prince you are single let me introduce to you my daughter I said to him why you are not saying the letter R correctly he said to me uh, actually I'm from France La, you know the, as an example I am the one who found the product it's called lingerie oh, okay no okay what what's what is the name of your daughter miss lingerie oh okay so now we have a Miss Shaitan and Mrs. Shaitan. We have a male devil and female devil. Hmm. Yeah, this is must be a true story. And now Muhammad is so afraid from entering the bathroom, and he is afraid from both. And this is making me even more I mean more sad why the Prophet is afraid of from the female shaitan female shaitan in the bathroom she is all over your private part the Prophet is so worried I seek refuge by Allah from the female shaitan. Unbelievable. So scary. You are sitting doing poo poo. I mean, this is really beyond imagination. This guy, he have to say that each time he want to enter the bathroom, he is worried that shit. Okay, Muslims, what male shaitan will do to the Prophet when he is in the bathroom? Be honest with me. Huh? Let us talk man to man. Even if you are a woman, I don't care. Let us talk man to man. Because even Muslim women, they are forbidden to shave their mustache, according to the Prophet. I can show you the hadith, which means even Muslim women, they are man. So let us talk man to man. Why the Prophet is afraid from female shaitan? I understand if he's afraid of from male shaitan because he might do bang bang to him. That would be really horrible. But why he's afraid? I mean, what what shaitan and what male shaitan and female shaitan they can do to the prophet? It's just a question. You don't need to answer today. You know, take your time. Uh, I don't know what to say.
Shaitani in the bathroom. Shaitani in the bathroom. He will do bang, 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 boom. He will do bang, 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 boom. The prophet is afraid from Shaitan in the bathroom. I should make a song about this man. Let me see if I can if I can receive inspiration from Allah. Once upon the time, I met a shaitan, and I noticed that the shaitan have two big breasts. I told him, "Are you shaitan or what?" She said, "Hello, are you blind? Don't you see my boobs?" I said, I see them. I thought this is maybe dust. Hello, excuse me. Are you stupid or what? Do you want to feel them? And you know, she is shaitan. Unbelievable. I said, no, 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 I believe you. She said, well, if you don't believe me, we can do some tricks. I said, like what? She said, you go in the bathroom and imagine yourself the Prophet Muhammad and I will show you what I used to do to him. Really? What you used to do to him? Oh, I cannot tell you. You have to go in the bathroom first. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I know now why the Prophet Muhammad, bees upon him, is so scared and terrified from the male shaitan and the female shaitan. Put yourself in his panty and you are going in the bathroom. Hmm. CMK, why I'm always talking about those stuff in this way. I talk about it this way. What I can do, you don't like it, don't listen to me. Anyone don't like the way I talk, don't listen, my friend. Go into the bathroom and seek refugee from shaitan. None of my business. Why I talk about it in this way? This is the problem now. All the stupidity in front of you in the screen and the problem why I'm talking this way. This is the problem. Are you sure? This is the only problem you see. Hmm. Anyway. Who cares if you guys like it or not? I don't care. I do what I think it's right to do. I'm not doing things because people like it. This is not customer service program. If you want customer service program, call the Dean Show. The Dean Show, you know, they answer your question even if it is not the one you ask. Uh, what's his name? <clears throat> uh, Yusuf, uh, yeah, what's his name? Sheikh Yusuf. Uh, now we receive a call and he hold the cell phone and nobody's we never heard the phone ringing and we never heard the sound of a voice He hold the phone in the cell phone. Have you ever heard of somebody calling TV station in the cell phone? Anyway, let it go Hello, assalamu alaikum. Yes. Yes. Yes, brother. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay uh, Watch us and I will give you the answer immediately Yes. Yes. Like yes, I will give you the answer. I swear by Allah so now he hang up, but nobody was talking to him. I called them. I called them many times. It's recorded. It's on YouTube. And they never let me go through because nobody can go through. There's no TV show. There's no program. There's nobody to answer. It's a lie. It is forbidden in Islam to make a call. You go. You, I, I used to go to Muslim rooms. I used to call them Red Indian rooms. You know, Red Indian, you know, the... The, in Arabic, we call the Native American, we call them Red Indian because supposedly they are red and they are Indian. Uh, so you go to the Red Indian room, which is the Muslim room, supposedly. I mean, no insult to the Indian, uh, the Native American. I call them this way because everybody in the chat room have a red dot. Everybody. Every single individual in the chat room have a red dot. Why? Because they are afraid somebody might post a question in the text.
That is the story. You know, it's okay. You know, don't don't block this guy. Okay, even if he's a Muslim, who cares? You see, I you don't have to agree with me the way I talk. I don't care really. You know, uh, uh, actually, one of the reasons, one of the reasons, uh, some people don't like uh, to have me in churches because I'm very natural. I don't fabricate things. I don't. I am not politically correct. I say things as it is. I remember once uh, I have a seminar. And the, the minister of the church, he have to make a presentation of like 20 minutes before I go on the stage to explain to them what they are going to face. So he starts saying, um, our friend here, Christian Prince, he is different from the kind of people you used to know. And let us make it this way. He say things like as it is. He don't put uh, makeup on it. So you might hear things you ne you are not used to hear. He have, he have to explain to them what's coming. Like, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I remember once, uh, you know, I said I, the church was so huge, like big, big church. You know, uh, do, do you know? Do you know the? You know, you know where the Muslims they attack the city? It's called Marawi. You know Marawi in Philippines. I made I made a seminar in a city. It's called Cagayan de Oro. Very huge, big one. It's like the church, they have like a big stadium for basketball. This is where we are doing the seminar, actually. Uh, all the stages, all, all the, 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 the stadium uh, floor is full with the chairs. And then there's the, the stadium chairs is full too. It's very loaded. So I said, uh, I was explaining to them what Muhammad said. I said, this is what, this is poo poo. Everybody in the church look at me like what this guy he said. You look at the faces, guys. You look at the faces. Hey, everybody like his mouth, like, what? Huh? What he said? Some of them, they are looking at you. What he said? I said again, this is poo poo. You know what poo poo means, right? They still did not get it. Like, is it is it poop? You know? I said, yeah, this is poop. This is poop. Muhammad is doing poo poo. So after that, first time, it was like a shocking for them. After that, each time I say something, show them how stupid it is, I say, this is what? This is everybody say poo poo. That is the truth. Why people don't want to say it? Just because you want to be politically correct. This is poo poo. I say things as it is. Many people don't dare to say it. They think. I am more a Christian if I don't use that word. That's false. Christian is someone he have to say what he exactly mean and what he exactly believe. You don't, you don't like it. Who care? This is poo, poo What do you want to describe it? This is zucchini. This is a cucumber. This is carrot. It's not. It's poo, -poo. When we finish, guys, the seminar. Actually, let me see if I have a picture in this computer. It's okay, no problem. Anyway, uh, when we finish the seminar, uh, I'm going to take the flight in the same day. They told me you better take a flight in the same day uh, because this area is very much full of ISIS, and this is true. This is why later, you know, ISIS attacked the city ne next door. Hello, hello. Hey, my friend, how are you? Ah, uh, you right? I'm um, okay. This is our friend and masking the fools. How is the fools? Please, how please, is, please don't say poo poo because people are gonna throw up and you're gonna upset them and you're gonna make them cry. <laughs> oh boy, that's not, and, they, and then they will sue me and then. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So, I just I, I wanted to ask actually, you know, because uh, you being from Middle East and that. Um, I mean, <coughs> recently, I've, I've been recently twice in the speaker's corner. And what's interesting is that, well, you know, there's a, there's a, um, the two brothers that go there and, you know, they, they're black 
and they go and talk about Islam and stuff. I don't know if you know the lady that was with um, with um, Jay Smith, the speaker's corner they used to speak. Mm, at home. I, I don't really watch. I watch oh, him maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What it is is that a lot of Muslims there. What they do, they got nothing to say. But then what they say is, they start saying, "Oh, you're refugees, immigrants." Uh, do you need a visa? And it's quite funny because, but that is all, them. Of, all of them. All of them are probably illegal anyway yeah. <laughs> themselves. Mm. No? Um, mm. But it just I wanted to talk because, like, I've I've lived with around a lot of you know Muslims and stuff, and especially like Arabs, Afghanistanis, Iraqis, I've met, you know, all these, you know, Persian sort of area and the other sides. And I find them, well, that they sort of conclusive, con conclusively everywhere, they seem to be racist and have issues with black people and like really racist. And it's just, you know, this sort of thing. Is that is that common in Middle East as well? You see, uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, not only in Middle East, uh, or many, uh, you see, racism is not only about Islam, yeah, by the way. Yeah, I understand. It's yeah. everywhere, but I'm just saying it in in general. I mean, what, what I'm talking about is that... Yeah, but the racist, racism in Islam... calls themselves a bit religious, if you know what I mean. Yeah, racism in Islam have many stages. But the first stage is, if you are not a Muslim, you are not from our race. So Islam considers itself by itself a race. If we go in the hadith, and let's go to the hadith now, as long as we are talking about this, we will see that in the hadith, Muhammad and his followers believe the Quran said that uh, the Muslims are the best nation for mankind, between mankind, which means if you are a Muslim, you are the best of mankind. So the Muslims, they believe that they are the best and the Quran, as long as the Quran describe other nations who they are not Muslims as the worst of the creatures, so you are not even considered as a human. Uh, let us read together what this is saying here. It says, The Quran, chapter 3, verse 1010, you are the best of people ever raised up. For the benefit of mankind, you see, when the Muslim they would be in two bracket, the benefit. You think this is good? I mean, the benefit. It's benefit. <laughs> it's something good. So let us see what is the benefit for mankind. The best for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. So the Muslim, he is the best, and you are just nothing, like but an animal. They bring you, they capture you, they put a chain around your neck, and then you have one of two choices. Either they treat you like an animal for you or an animal for them, or you embrace Islam. Then they will treat you like a human being. So for a Muslim, as long you are not a human being for them, you are just not Muslim. Or let us say, as long you are not a Muslim, you are not a human being. You are an animal need to be captured. You need to put a leash on you, take you as a slave. And we force you to convert to Islam. And by the way, not necessarily, if they take you as a slave, they will accept you even to be free. Because after you, uh, like in certain stage in Islam, after you became a slave, even if you convert, they will not free you. Because now they have to a lot of slaves. If everybody convert to Islam, then we free him, that will be a problem. So they don't free no more. So you convert to Islam, you don't convert to Islam, we want to free you. And Muhammad is the best example. The Muslim, they have a very famous man, a black man, his name is Bilal. They keep lying to us saying that Bilal was the first uh, person who called for the prayer but they will not say to you why because he was the slave of Muhammad who he'd been ordered to do so the white man the Arab man he don't want to go for him in the morning jump in the top of the roof scream like a crazy lose his voice so they yeah, order... Bilal, Bilal was a true Muslim and he really loved Allah and he he, you know, I, don't he didn't be, I don't believe he, he, he up early, uh, naturally maybe uh, no I don't believe he is a Muslim at all I believe this guy he have no choice he's a, he's a slave of his master and he trying to buy his his uh, freedom this is why uh, Bilal he said to Abu Bakr after the death of Muhammad if you bought me for the sake of Allah keep me for the sake of Allah 
if you bought me for uh, sorry, free me for the sake of Allah. If you if you bought me for yourself, free me, uh, keep me for yourself because the one who bought Bilal originally is Abu Bakr. So now Muhammad died, and now Abu Bakr became in charge because he is the slave belong to Aisha now. Muhammad he died, so now Abu Bakr is in charge. He is the real owner. So he came to Abu Bakr saying to him, "If you bought me for the sake of Allah, will you free me for the sake of Allah? I spent all my life serving Muhammad." And here the question is, why Muhammad did not free Bilal? Yeah, how can how can he be considered as a slave? You know, why he is a slave anyway? He is a slave. He's bought yeah. as a slave. He stayed as a slave, and Muhammad died, and the poor man is still as a slave. So why Muhammad did not free this man, who the Muslims so proud about him that the first black was the one who called for the prayer, but they will not mention that he was a slave, and Muhammad died, and this poor man is a slave. And he said it clearly. And if there's a Muslim here, he want to say this is not true. Hmm? Call me, and I will show you the reference immediately, right away in the front of your face. Who want to do that? Any Muslim want to do that? Nobody. So the race in Islam have many. Uh, Uh, many stages the first race is as a Muslim we discriminate everybody and then the Arab they discriminate others so if you are not Arab uh, Islam discriminate you you see the Muslim they say uh, that Islam or the Prophet he have a sermon at before he die uh, and in his sermon he said there's no difference between the black and white uh, when it's come to Islam but that is not uh, true. The the this sermon actually there's no in no proof of its existence anyway. I believe it's written long after Muhammad. However, Muhammad he said, the best of mankind are the Arab, and the best of the Arab is Quraysh, and the best of Quraysh is Banu Hashim, and the best of Bani Hashim is me. <laughs> <laughs> so how they lie to us? They say that there is no there is no such a thing in Islam. So. Benny Hashem is like his, the free his, the, his, the, his family, the, the his, free range, the organic ones, and then the other ones is semi free range, and the other ones is kept in the cage. It's like different classes of eggs, right? Yeah, like, but, but however, the Arab is the best man of mankind. The Arab are the best. The rest, the rest is just a complete number. The Arab is the best, and then the best of the best is the Quraysh, the tribe of Muhammad. And then the best of the best of Quraysh is Banu Hashim, which is the family of Muhammad. And then the best of the best of the best of Banu Hashim is Muhammad himself. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. So he is. So you see, he didn't say the best of mankind is the Muslim. You know, he meant the Arab specifically. And then from the Arab is his... Uh, tribe and then from his uh, tribe is his family and from his family is him that is uh, look 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 at the difference here though because if, if i was to say the best of mankind would be somebody who i would say you know somebody who um basically loves god with all their hearts loves their neighbors himself you know would be in terms of a character not somebody from a country because you can have uh, any country you can pick any country in the world and you're gonna find the bad people and the good people and so forth you know yeah um, so it does it doesn't really matter uh, too much in terms of the country when it comes to that because you're gonna find good people there and there so you should in in, in this context as a religious man Muhammad should have said the best of mankind are those who you know uh, basically help the poor and you know help the I don't know the the people who are sick and stuff like that you know wouldn't wouldn't that make more sense you know but remember always all all cults they have to add some spice to their cult to make it look as a good religion so in Islam you will find that uh, the Islam says uh, some places you know help the poor one but he will not explain to you that the help is coming to the poor Muslims is coming from the money they stole from the Christians and the Jews. So, uh, 
uh, uh, help here is not really something uh, it, it, Islam the appearance of it some somehow it looked like it, there is some good value but if you go and study the details you will find that those values are not exist I found this hadith in front of me I don't know if you can see it no, I can't because I'm on the phone okay it says I am Muhammad bin Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib he's saying who is he indeed Allah created the creation and he put me in the best group of them then he made them into two groups so he put me in the best group of them then he made them into tribes so he put me in the best tribes then he made them into houses so he put me in the best of them in tribe and lineage do you see it muslims so muhammad claimed that the arab are the best mankind and then from those a group of arab is his tribe and from his tribe there's houses there's families they are all is a big family but then there is a small branches so he is from the best families of all the family of his tribe and then from his family he is the best of the family by the bloodline so Muhammad claim an honor coming all the way from the Arab all the way to him well can I can I just say hold on a minute because how can he be from the best family when his mom according to him is in hell and his dad he doesn't even know his dad um, you know some say he's Abdullah or whatever but you know how can he be from the best family you actually know? actually according to the Quran anyone who don't believe in Allah is najis not only he will go that, to hell. That, that's yeah that's that's what I mean I mean yeah so how can how can he be put on the best family when he doesn't really have a family all right you know so he have a bad family according to Islam the good family is the one the one the good ones is the one who believe in Allah so how he is a proud about his tribe when they are of them all of them they are idols worshippers and the hypocrite Muhammad he said before in different hadith the one who is a pro proud about his pre-islamic era family go and, uh, the other, I'm not gonna say go the and I say it why not I go and buy the penis of your father tell him go and buy the penis of your father so how come nobody says to Muhammad go and buy the penis of your father because now he's proud about his father the, Kuf the kafir and his grandfather the kafir and his uncle is the kuffar and his family they are all kuffar and his tribe who they are all of them kuffar and not only that according to Muslims they fought him and they don't want Islam so why he's proud about them hypocrisy he just want to claim that he is the best of mankind and the Arab are the best and different hadith, well, actually let me see if I can find uh, if I can find uh, um, there's a hadith maybe it's going to be hard to find it in English uh, uh, let, me, let me see hold on there is tons of stories I have them actually I have a lot of hadith in my in my books uh, the deception of Allah about this and as usual always reference coming uh, read them here okay you cannot read the messenger of Allah said indeed Allah has a chosen Ishmael from the children of Abraham okay Muhammad now he claimed that he is from Ishmael and he chose Banu Kinana from the children of Ishmael Banu Kinana has a tribe and he chose Quraysh from Banu Kunana so Kunana is the highest tribe Quraysh is the smallest tribe coming out of Banu Kunana and he chose Banu Hashim from Quraysh this is his family and he chose me from Banu Hashim so all uh, uh, all these choices happen because Allah he want to reach the point where he chose Muhammad so Ishmael is not important and by the way Muhammad have nothing to do with Ishmael but this is what he says and supposedly Ishmael is the father of Bani 
Kunana and uh, from Bani Kunana there is other tribe Allah he chose it there's many tribes from Bani Kunana they are big, big, bigger tribe and then there's smaller branches Quraysh is one of them Quraysh is the best of Bani Kunana then or Kinana and then from Bani Kinana Quraysh and from Quraysh Bani Hashim and from Hashim Muhammad so the whole idea here is there is people who they are the best of mankind and those are all are Arab because according to Muslims the first Arab man is Ishmael he is the father of the Arab which is false because even in their books it says that Ishmael he learned Arabic at the age of 11 to 14 from the Arab from the tribe of Jam. Hmm. yeah so uh, contradiction, contradiction as usual yeah so this is here they start the, seeing the racism that they are the best this is why you see the Arab they look down at the Muslims who they are not Arab and this is why you find someone from Somalia who is an African suddenly he claimed to be an Arab why because he's trying to level himself up you find somebody he is have nothing to do with the Arab like Egyptian like what is the what is the name of the country of Egypt today the Republic of the Arab the Arab Republic of Egypt but this is Africa what Arab <laughs> according according to Islamic books, four thousand occupy Egypt, which was at that time four millions. Now, why it was four million and they were able to occupy it? Because the population, they are not part of the state. They are they used to be uh, they conquered by the Roman. The Roman they, they 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 came out of a war from the Persian, and they cannot send more soldiers to fight. So the four thousand it was very able for them, very easy to take over. So how four thousand Arab made four million Arab? Let us say for the sake of argument, those four thousand they married, get married from or rape women. How four thousand can make four millions Arab? So Egypt is an is a, is an African country, but yet they call themselves Arab because they want to level themselves up. They want to say we are Arab, the same as Muhammad. Same as Syria, same as Jordan, same as Iraq, same Syria is the language of the Syrian is Syrian, Aramaic. What does that do with Arab? Enter the Caliphate, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Nobody in Syria speak Arabic. Zero. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he did something it's called the Arab the, the uh, uh, Arabis of the of uh, of the books, which means all the books of the state was was written by Aramaic, even in his time. And the one is in charge of Aramaic people. So then he forced the Arabic as a language for the state. This is the first time the Arabic language start to be forced on those who they are not Muslims. So now Syria, if you speak to Syrian people, they will they will say to you, "We are Arab," but the fact they are not. The Jordanian, well, even 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 Iranians. I mean, Iranians they're supposed to be um, <clears throat> Aryans, like. They are Persian you know, from Germany, yeah. you know, they, they, they're they are Persians, Persian. you know, yeah. they nothing to do with Arabs, you know, Iranian in Iraq in that area. They have nothing to do with uh, Arabs. You know, the, the Persian, I, I, I don't think a Persian he would say is an Arab because this is an insult for him. They, but, yeah, they, I, I think the Persians and the Afghanistanis, they do separate themselves from Arabs. Um, and actually, I found a lot of non-Arabs who are Muslims, you know, from these countries, they actually hate the Arabs and I'm I was a bit surprised but I've, I've, I've yeah because there's a there's I'm, a big I've, war between I've the Arab, Arab and Persian they have a long history of war and hatred until mm. now the Sunni when they want to uh, like they want to make people hate the Shia they don't speak about them as um, Shia they speak about them as Persian you know so they say to you the Persian so they, they want to remind the Arab of the old history of a bloody war between them so they don't speak about the the, the Persian uh, by sect they mention them that they are Persian those remember those are our enemy we are the Arab so this is how they ignite hate against the Shia saying those are the Persian are you going to let the Persian take over like now the war in Syria when they speak when you hear the speeches of the Muslim Shia, Sunni mullahs speaking they don't say uh, those are just the Shia no they add the word Shia and they are the, the add the word uh, the Persian right after it because they want to confirm to those people they are not only Shia 
they are Persian so we should kill them all uh, but generally speaking you will find the Muslim Sunni is the one who attached himself to the ass of the Arab Shia most of them they don't do that most of them you know so uh, like there is a some of the Shia they claim to be from the family of Muhammad those they have to say we are Arab anyway but generally speaking mostly the Sunni it doesn't matter what they are from they are the one who try to close themselves with the close of the Arab this is why you go to Pakistan you will see someone he don't even speak Arabic but his name is a close his food his etc his words when they greet each other they use Arabic words why because Islam forced itself as an Arabic religion and not only this you have to pray in Arabic this is very important if Islam is not a racist religion and God speak all languages and he understand all mankind and it doesn't matter if you are an Arab or a Persian or German or Japanese Chinese whatever why I cannot speak to this God in my language why I have to speak in Arabic because Islam is an Arab it's a 100% Arabian religion this is why the Quran confirm many time that this is an Arabian religion and the Quran is an Arabian book and the Quran was sent to the Arab you see the Muslim they keep saying to us Muhammad was uh, sent to all mankind but the fact the Quran says it clearly that Allah he sent Muhammad to uh, to Mecca and what is around it and Mecca is a small village chapter 6 verse number 92 okay it says the following let us read together and this is a book which ha we have sent down bringing blessing and confirming revelation which came before it which means the Bible and the Torah and here you notice is the, the Quran is confirming it and those missed warn the mother of the cities and what is around it what is the mother of the cities it's not really the mother of city Umul Qura is the mother of the villages what is that that's Mecca and what is around it so the Quran confirmed Muhammad was just in the beginning trying to be an Arabian prophet Arabian religion Arabian cult by the Arab for the Arab that's all then when Muhammad his business extended he was you know the, the, the Muslims they were able to occupy other countries then they have to make it that this is a message for all mankind and Muhammad is an international messenger he became a global superstar after and then so yeah. he thought yeah expand the business worldwide yeah but this is but the Quran says it clearly that this is for the, the 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 those who live in Mecca and those who they are around Mecca how many people around Mecca what is around Mecca it's a, it's a desert you know and the Quran confirm over and over that Allah will never send a messenger unless he speak the tongue of his people we never send a messenger unless he speak the tongue on the language of his people all right and why so the Quran explained we send not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people so the Quran confirmed that Allah will never send a messenger to any nation unless he speak the language of his people so Muhammad at that time he never thought he is going to expand his business he is a messenger for the Arab and he explained to them why I am a messenger to you because Allah never sent a messenger unless he speak the tongue of his people and he explained why in order to make things clear to them that makes sense so Allah he sent the messenger speak in the language of the land so the people of the land they will understand the message so how this is this is a contradiction for for saying Muhammad is a messenger for the German or for the Chinese or for the, the the Indian because this is against the confirmation of the Quran where it says I never sent never never and this is a statement he sent in the time of Muhammad which means Muhammad is included already he's there Muhammad already is a, as a messenger so we send not we send not except a person who is from the people speaking the language of people so they can understand what he's saying and he said that to Muhammad so we said not including you Muhammad so then how Muslims they say Muhammad is an international messenger right no even no even that 
um, when we look at, I mean, even even by admission of uh, Muslims, most of the messengers and prophets and whatever they call them, uh, you know, they are Jews, and historically, we know as a as a fact that the Jews speak Hebrew. You know, yeah. Hebrew is is basically their language. Is 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 something that nobody can deny. I mean, Israel became a nation in a day, and they already all spoke Hebrew. So, my point on this is that if they spoke only Hebrew, you know, these prophets of, let's say, Allah, you know, um, then who did who passed the message to the Quraysh and to the Arabs or to the Chinese and that sort of stuff, you know? You know, it, it seems to be just the Jews, a small group of people uh, that they- has all these prophets that only speak the language for the Jews and nobody else, you know? So it, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's, it completely doesn't make sense. You see, in the Quran, you know? confirm what you said, uh, the Quran confirmed that the prophethood is only from the children of Isaac and Jacob. If we go to the Quran, and I want the Muslim to listen carefully, chapter 29, verse number 27. And as you see, this is your translation, Muslims. I have nothing to do with it. It says, And we gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and ordained among this progeny, prophethood and revelation. So what Allah gave Abraham? He gave him Isaac and Jacob. Why? Where is where is Ishmael? Where is Ishmael? If Muhammad, according to Muslims, from Ishmael, and prophet will come from Ishmael, why the Quran says, and we give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and ordained among his progeny, prophethood and revelation. Ishmael is not considered. Is not considered he's considered as in different verse as a as a prophet but the prophethood is a from the offspring of isaac and jacob this is what the verse is saying and i change any muslim to say it's not that's not true it's in front of our eyes yeah it's kind of funny because it makes it as if ishmael would have come long after isaac and jake uh, i mean like isaac no, uh, according to Muslims, and they and they, they agree that uh, uh, Ishmael is the oldest son of Abraham. So how here he is not even mentioned? How you how you jump over the the elder? You see, uh, in the Middle East, in our tradition, like my older brother is 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 the same as I respect him the same as my father. Which means, if my father pass away, the older brother yeah, in the family even, even in hebrew is is always the, yeah. the older one gets the, right. gets the first respect yeah the so oldest. the older one he will be the same he will he will take the place of the father and he will make decisions for the whole family so here we have a problem abraham his older son is ishmael according to islam okay so why they are jumping in the verse here saying and we gave abraham isaac and jacob and we made it from their offspring the prophethood and the revelation so two things will come from the offspring of Jacob, prophethood and revelation. So where is Ishmael, and why is not mentioned that from his offspring there is, will be prophethood and revelation? So here there is a mistake. Muhammad in the beginning, uh, you know, as always, he say things trying to fool people around him. And I believe when he said that he was speaking to the Jews. He didn't want to make them angry. So he did not mention Ishmael. He said, <laughs> forget about Ishmael because the Jews don't approve him. So let us forget about Ishmael. He is not a prophet. From his his his, his offspring, there's no prophet. So what Muhammad did, he want to confirm to the Jews that I believe in the same you believe. And from Isaac and from Jacob, we established the prophet prophethood, and from them, from their seed, the scriptures will deliver to us. So where is Ishmael? He he deleted Ishmael. For the sake of his political agenda, we speak to the Jews, so we mention to the Jews what they like to hear. But this is a total contradiction for the whole belief of Islam, and what we showed you that he claimed that he is from Ishmael, because if this verse is true, 
that means Muhammad cannot be a prophet for the Quran promise that all the prophethood and all the scriptures is coming from the seed of Isaac and Jacob so how the Muslim will solve this problem anyone do we have any Muslim would like to give us a call no maybe Zakir Naik will find the answer to that uh, yeah. he's usually very good maybe and you hear you see here the Muslim cannot play games and say oh it doesn't say that all the prophethood no it says that it says it says the prophethood and the books he didn't say prophethood and books he didn't say that he said you know L in Arabic when you add it is the same as that Nubuwa is a prophethood so we made in his let, let us make it clear for those who don't speak Arabic AL means the mean the yeah like you say the tree the man uh, the prophethood you know so the first two letters in red mean the okay now we change the rest of the letter the rest of the of the word here is the word nubuwa let us make it uh, maybe we cannot change the color because that one okay from here to here this is the word here is nubuwa nubuwa mean prophethood so we made the prophethood not prophethood or some prophethood the prophethood all of it from and not only that well kitab and the scriptures so al appearing again in the front of the word scriptures or book al so what we made we made the prophethood the scriptures from his offspring Zuriyatahu. this is the word here Zuriyatahu. As you see this is again exposed the stupidity and the hypocrisy of Muhammad who was trying to be hypocrite to the Jews trying to say to them I believe exactly in what you believe that prophethoods they are coming from Isaac and Jacob but he forgot that he is not from Jacob and Isaac so how he can be a prophet then how he himself is just saying to them this is what God told me that we made it from the pro we made it from the seeds of Isaac and Jacob the prophethood the scriptures but yet he is not stupid but you know uh, always uh, the best thing about false uh, uh, teachers is their stupidity so you can expose them otherwise yeah, they, contra they contradict themselves all the time I yeah. mean to be honest when it comes to Islam and just all you have to do is literally just open any page of a Quran and you will see contradiction within any page almost you know you just open a page and you see a contradiction or something really crazy or funny um every time I've I've, I've gone to a thing you know sometimes I've gone to search a particular verse and I read the verse after it and I go what if you you know is it yeah if, if you read if you read the pact of Omar I don't know if you remember it one of the, the 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 conditions Omar he put in the Christians in Jerusalem that they will not teach their children's Islam. <clears throat> Why? Why he don't want them to learn Islam? Because yeah, the because problem is exposed. They, they they don't want the kids to speak to the other kids and expose Islam. It's as simple as that. Because if they learn Islam as I'm doing right now, you will know how stupid Islam is. That's it. Otherwise, they should that's, be. That's, how, that's why. That's why he has survived because he has never been challenged. No, no, they challenge him. They challenge Islam from the beginning. No, no, the, the, no, no. I understand, but yeah. not in a large scale. You know, no, no in larger scale. They, trust me, in large scale. But, you know, but who there? You are under occupation. Yeah, this is this is what this is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, it has been under occupation. That's why Islam has survived because nobody has been I mean you got people in the West they can't even 
dare to say anything because you know for various reasons you know they people getting prosecuted being called racist and all sorts you know that there, sort there of is thing. there is so, a there is a, a person who used to work for the caliphate uh, during the uh, the state of the Abbasian in Iraq this guy he is a Christian and he's very super intelligent now uh, uh, a Muslim uh, who supposed he is a descendant for the family of Muhammad he sent him a letter this guy is very important for the caliphate he is the let us say the caliphate he have a bunch of dump uneducated Muslims around him and he needed then always they needed somebody who can't run you know the Jews actually not only protected they are the one who was making the country a country because the Muslims they have they have no skills they are Bedouin savage people they are Arab now who is going to run the country either we use the Christians who they are the local who they are educated or we use the Jews this guy he was a very intelligent super educated person the Muslim scholar he sent him a letter inviting him to leave Christianity and to convert to Islam this guy he wrote a letter back to him he humiliate Islam and he knew he might lose his head then when he wrote the letter which is a big bust to Islam and to Muhammad and to Allah and imagine he called Muhammad your your and your friend you have you invite me to believe in your friend <laughs> you don't call, <laughs> you don't even call him prophet you know imagine he worked for them he worked for them in their in the palace of the caliphate which mean one move from the finger of the caliphate his head will be loose and he was saying things you will not believe it then when he wrote the letter they send it to the caliphate to show him what this guy he said he insulted the Islam and so the Allah and so did the Prophet he 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 destroyed Islam the caliphate he cannot get rid of him he need him badly he said well if you did not ask him he would not answer you <laughs> <laughs> you know so this guy he's a hero actually when I when I when I saw his uh, his debate I could not believe how brave this man is imagine you live between them and your work in the caliphate palace but the caliphate because he worked there he knew he cannot lose him he need him badly so now he had to find a excuse how after he insulted Islam insulted Muhammad he said Islam is a stupid religion how I can let him live so he come with the excuse he said well if you did not write the letter for him he will not give you the answer back why you wrote the letter for him live with it you know <laughs> but that's not because the caliphate is a person of just but because he need this person he cannot get rid of him yeah because 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 if he was of just he he can say he well one they would be able to respond you know they they respond and correct him yeah but the, the, say, the real reason the real see, reason behind it is you, he, you he, know, he need him you, you know if 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 that letter was sent to if that letter Com compare that letter to a comment that you, you somebody makes in YouTube and um, the Muslim will straight away say you're lying this is not true you why don't you go and debate uh, Zakir Naik you see they, you're, they did you're, not you're lying. they did not but this guy the they, caliphate didn't didn't say this guy doesn't know what he's talking about or that he's lost or that he needs to be told the true meaning of Islam as some Muslims keep repeating now you know he the caliphate clearly understood that he's correct <laughs> you know well, if you if you read uh, maybe one day I will translate the whole thing uh, uh, to, to I never read thing. I never heard of this though what you just said yeah it's it's amazing actually the uh, you know uh, how see. far did, when was this roughly but uh, this is a, during the the Abbas state this is a couple of hundred of years after Muhammad um, uh, okay, Abi Ishaq. Okay, I think I found it here. Yeah. Yeah, this is the this is a Muslim website. Um mostly like uh you know, maybe three hundred years after Muhammad, four hundred years, not sure really exactly. Uh you know the Muslims they have different dates of uh, things 
So you cannot, uh, yeah, you, yes, you, you, cannot yeah. you cannot take it into just rough, just rough the idea. Yeah, no, I never, I never heard of it. This is the first I've, I've heard, so I never heard of it. Yeah, but I think it's about maybe four hundred years after Muhammad. Uh, but anyway, this guy he sent a letter, you know, it, uh, inviting this man to convert to Islam, and he not, he's just not, not like his convert to Islam. No, he's saying like he's, he's, uh, he's putting his argument about the Trinity, about Jesus being Son of God, everything you know we know about Islam, uh, what they reject. Uh, and then this guy, he sent him a letter in details, answering everything he said, in details, you know. And the answer was really scary. Like this guy, he did, he 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 made this Muslim, and this Muslim is not only a Muslim scholar; he is he he claimed to be descended from the Prophet of Allah himself. So he claimed to be from the family of Muhammad. This is why when the when the letter came to this man. They publish it all over. That's why we have it today. The Muslim they start spreading, and they start attacking the Caliphate. Look what this Christian he just said, and this Caliphate, he did not cut his head, you know. Now for sure, if I am a Christian, exist at that time, I will be so proud of, about this amazing Christian who did silence them in the middle of their uh, 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 government. The trusses. Yeah. And he was not worried about he because I'm sure when he was writing this letter, this guy is signing his death. Yeah, of course. You know, this is not a letter to send. When imagine you are you are living in, in a town controlled by ISIS, and then you say to ISIS, Well, your you know, your prophet he received Quran by uh, uh, a guy we never saw, we never met, his name is blah blah blah. It's like he did not leave anything without expose. Of course, and and one of the things is as well, you know, this is not like an internet age, where you can post something and everybody can see, oh, no, no. and you can become he, a hero. He, he received or this no, he this guy. Basically, nobody would know where he was. He's even gone. He just disappeared. Yeah, you know? no, he is. He worked for the caliphate. He go to his work every morning. They knew his house. He lived in the town. The mm -hmm. letter came to his hand by hand. He sent the letter with one of his uh, servant to the other guy. By hand, they deliver it. So, like, it's an official can, thing. Can you can you post his um, name on the on yeah. your info thing? Yeah, uh, so let me. Uh, I, 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 I post this story. I post this, but this is in, in uh, as I, I said. Uh, yeah, if you can post the link, even in Arabic, uh, uh, because I can tr we, we we can translate it as well. You know, Google has a uh, how to translate on the page. Yeah, we can do that. Let's see. You know, I would try uh, to find just so it. I want to read it. I want to read it as well because it seems like an interesting story. Is this something that is well known in our Arab world and stuff? Not, you know, depending how educated you are. You know, this is every, everything in the Arab world. I can find you a, a Christian, Arab Christian. He don't know even how to say uh, the, uh, you know, the, our Father out of heaven. You know, it's not. Yeah, I'm, no, no, I understand yeah. that, but I'm saying this story is, is something that depend, um, depend in how uh, you know. This is nothing. It's called. Uh, Okay. Uh, people who they are interested in religion, they knew. People who they are, you know, there's people who live just for party and dance and shish kebab and hummus everywhere. You know, same. So, so there is places to where you can find the, both rebuttals and stuff like you know. Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I posted it in my website. Let me see if I can get it to you. Uh, let us see. Yeah, just uh, be interesting to read. You know, I like this sort of stuff. It's intriguing. Yeah, let us see. What a brave man, though. Yeah, actually, That's not only is it, you know, it's just uh, uh, this guy is. Uh, uh, let us see. So think yeah. about it. It's not like this guy has nothing to lose because he's already got, you know, I'm sure he is already has a decent living. Well, so, he, he is in a high position and for the caliph, yeah, you know, yeah. this is what I mean. So he's already has a high position. The, the debate is, good. let me post the link for you, but I don't know if it's going to work in the chat, but I can give it to you in uh, Skype. Um, if you guys, guys, if you go to uh, Arabic dot investigate Islam dot com, Arabic dot investigate Islam dot com. I have actually only two articles there. I did not publish anything uh, in Arabic. Uh, you will find this article. It says the letter 
of Abdullah ibn Ismail Al Hashimi. Al Hashimi, which means from the family. Remember, Muhammad last name is what Banu Hashim. So he is from the family of Muhammad. The letter of Abdullah, son of Ishmael, from the family of Hashimi, which means the family of Muhammad. To Abdul Masih, the slave of the Messiah, the son of Isaac, Al Kindi. يَدْعُوهُ بِهَا إِلَى Islam. He invite him to convert to Islam. And the message or the letter of the slave of the Messiah, Al-Kindi, إِلَى Hashimi, respond to that. He asked him to convert to Christianity. <laughs> 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 and here it says the date, actually. This is uh, uh, like, uh, according to Islamic re resource, but as I said, I can, you cannot trust Islamic resource. Uh, this is during the time of the Caliphate al mamun which is uh, about 861 uh, our our time, which is 247 uh, Islamic calendar. You know? Yeah, not not too far, not too long. Yeah, but you know, as I said, you know, I don't trust uh, any number the Muslims they bring. You know, but this is what they say. Uh, uh, the letter there, I don't know if you can use. Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have a actually actually this is published. It, I don't know if you can find it because here it says that this is uh, this is uh, this letter is published uh, by the library. Um, I don't know what kind of library in in London uh, as manuscript in in the, in the year 1885, which means they have the original manuscript for it in London. Wow. Yeah. So it was published. As a copy of the manuscript, which is located in London in the year 1885. Yeah. So, so it's not a made up story then, I guess? No, no, no. This is not a made up story. You know, this person is very well known and this is history. And this guy, he made him, if I, uh, maybe, maybe one day I can translate. It's not really long. I mean, it, it can make maybe, uh, maybe. 20 pages or 15 pages of translation maybe 20 pages or 30 i'm not sure mm -hmm. but uh, well well like i said i can read it because um, in the google if you press um, actually it's long there is yeah on chrome you can you don't have to send it to google translate you can just do with a click mm. and you can it translates the page you know mine asks automatically do you want me, do you want to translate this into english but so uh, but you see the problem is the language is written with yeah, is, yeah. is not yeah, yeah. I, normal, I understand uh, but at least you get the picture like, of the story yeah yeah but uh, uh, the, the Arabic language is like uh, the old strong uh, which mean it's not easy to understand by Google will give you a very funny translation I'm sure yeah I can understand but just to try and get the story that seems interesting yeah. but yeah I mean it's just intriguing that um, well uh, it, it kind of explains that the way the Arabs are seen superior to the others, and but what I've noticed, like from people that I've known, like from even from Afghanistan, where, for example, there was a case where the guy was saying that he met this Arab girl, and basically he wanted to be bad to her, you know, sleep with her because he didn't care because she was Arab and he hates Arab. You know, he's a Muslim, but yes. it just seems to be this kind of division, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. of Arabs and and then if you're black, is it you're different? You know, it seems to be um, too much of a separation. Even though the Muslims keep claiming that oh, we are brothers, we all one community, we're all one this and so forth, but within each other, it's like a cracks if you know what i mean they they do hate each other too much you know the afghanis they hate the pakistanis they hate they hate they just hate put them, so just, much. just put them in one street and see what will happen this is what happened always like in those camps for refugee they started slaughtering each other you know the gang mm, mm, you know? Mm. and they're all muslims yeah they are muslims they but they gang them. against each other because they are different ethnic different groups uh, even different religions sometimes, you know, like Shia, Sunni, uh, depend. Yeah. Anyway, all right, what all right, all right bro. Um, nice talking to you. Thank you for calling, my friend. Thank you. All right. God bless. God bless. Thank, Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Good night.
do we have any Muslim would like to call? Do we have any Muslim would like to call? So anyway, like everything in this religion is a cult and there's nothing there can be considered as a true belief. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's just a collection of ideas taken from here and there. Some from the Christians, some from the Jews, some from the Sabians, some from the pagans before Islam, because Islam is just a continuum of the pagan religion exists before Islam. The you know the uh, the Kaaba was exist before Islam. The black stone was before Islam. They kissed him. They bow down. And then they know they do everything. The Safa and Al Marwa, which is two idols of two a human, a male and female. Supposedly they have sex together. They go between them. Everything between both before Islam and after Islam is exist in Islam. I challenge the Muslim to show me one thing. They say they say as an example. That around the Kaaba there was idols around the Kaaba there was idols okay and Islam destroyed those idols but Islam did not destroy the Kaaba for the Kaaba itself is one of the idols and the Kaaba itself contain in its stones idols as, a, as an example the black stone you see when the Muslim they say to us that the black stone is a stone coming from heaven that's what that's a belief of paganism that there's stones coming from heaven and we worship them when Muhammad he says if you touch those stones they forgive your sin how that can be not a pagan religion when Muhammad he says the black stone is the right hand of Allah and is going to witness for Allah for the sin of mankind what does that mean this is a pagan belief when Muhammad he says the stone used to be white like milk and became a black because of sin that's mean he believed and the Muslim believed that this is a living stone and this stone is affected by sin that is a paganism this is a living stone have eyes have ears can hear us and sin will make it dirty not dirt make it dirty sin right so when the Muslims speak about not being pagan and the funny the Muslims even in this debate the one I showed you about this guy the Christian guy refuting this uh, Abdul he said to him, uh, uh, it's better than worshipping the cross. But no, it's no Christian worship the cross. This is a lie. Muslim, they keep repeating. Not a single Christian worship the cross. Where do you get this from? Where do you get this from? They will say to you, well, you kiss the cross. Well, you don't. who said you have to kiss the cross? This is a tradition people do because it is uh, uh, symbolic for what Jesus did. But kissing the cross is not from Christianity. Did Jesus says kiss the cross we are talking about a prophet of Islam he is kissing the stone not his followers start kissing the stones the founder of Islam the prophet of Islam kissing stones so people they can do things which is not right but if it is not coming from Jesus this is have nothing to do with the Christianity Muhammad was doing things is not right that is not acceptable he is the prophet he is the founder of Islam so why he do that uh, I see in the text some people speaking about the Catholic and the Pope anyone want to go there get get out we have no place for this garbage the Pope he kissed the Quran who so let us make it simple. He is a hypocrite. And you are a hypocrite too. You kiss many things around you and they are not holy. You kiss your dollar. You kiss your car. You worship many things. And now the Pope is the bad guy. Well, he's a bad guy. So what? But this doesn't mean the Catholic are bad. He is being hypocrite to the Muslims. Don't be stupid. Don't play games here. Everyone he do sin, he will be taken accountable for his sin. So if there is somebody his name is the Pope, he commits sin, he commits sin, not the Catholic. George Bush is not a Catholic, he said Islam means peace. Hmm? How many of you in Europe, in America, big leaders from both churches? 
say Islam is a good religion and Islam is the same faith as we are uh, you know so how just the the Pope is the problem hypocrisy is the flag of this world and people don't want to see that how hypocrite they are do yourself yourself do you go do you did you make a video ever the one who's speaking about the Pope did you make a video attacking the Pope or attacking Islam I'm sure you will be happy to attack the Pope but you will not dare to attack Islam that is a hypocrisy so suddenly we found something to make it as against the Catholic because they the Pope kissed the Quran The Pope he gave a Bible to the guy the guy he gave him Quran the Muslim guy He kissed the Bible the, the Pope. He have no choice, but to kiss the, the Quran. It's it is hypocrisy of politics This is what happened and now you make it a story and that we cannot forget about it Well did the Pope convert to Islam? The same Pope you are talking about is the same Pope who said this Muhammad he brought nothing but evil how come you remember this? You didn't remember that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you know, uh, people, they do a lot of stupid things and they say a lot of stupid things. They are not aware even what is happening. You see, when the Pope, he said, Islam, Muhammad brought nothing but evil. Do you know what happened? More than 27 people killed overnight. 27 Christians in the Middle East. So the Pope right away, he have to fix it. Otherwise, more Christians will be killed. He made just a statement and people, they are losing their family for a statement he, made, he did say. So in his position, what he say is not the same as a Christian prince. He say something. If the Pope right now he go and say Muhammad is a filthy evil, a war will happen. A war will happen. So stop being a liar and stop being deceiving yourself. This guy, he is in a political position and everybody is watching every word he say. I don't agree with what he say. I don't agree with him anyway. But we have to be truthful and we have to be honest. And by the way, for those stupid ones who keep attacking the Catholic, if not the Catholic, you will be a Muslim today. It is the Catholic who protected you. It is the Catholic who defend Christianity. They are the crusade. If not the crusade, you will be a slave of the Abdul. America, Europe, Australia, Canada, all will be slave of the Abdul. It is the Catholic who saved you. But you know, people, they want to remember what they want, and they don't want to remember what they want. It's depend in the mood. So what we remember, a bad history of the Catholic, where well, everybody have a bad history. And every church have a bad people and good people. Anyway, we as a Christians, if you are a truly a Christian, you look at your brother in Christ as a brother in Christ, doesn't matter what church you go to. For Jesus never said something is called the Protestant and Catholic and Orthodox. He said, whoever believe in me and die, he will live. Whoever. Whoever believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, he belong to him. Whoever believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, his cross, his salvation, his coming back, he belong to him. So stop working for the devil, which is Allah in this case, and divide the Christians. You see the Quran in chapter 5, verse number 15, says it clearly that Allah will spread hate and enmity between the Christians. And obviously, Allah was successful. Yes, he was. And many of those who claim to be Christians, they serve the devil Allah. And they divide the Christianity and they kill each other. But funny, you will find
find those people, the same people. They say, Jesus said, love your enemy. Jesus said, the one who kill you, uh, the one who uh, slam your face, give him the other cheek. The same ones, they don't want to love the Catholic. And the Catholic, they don't want to love the Protestant. Well, if you do that, whoever do that from both parties, you don't belong to Jesus. Hypocrisy. How you claim to be Christian, and you cannot forget, the one who commit a crime, in certain time he will pay for it. Trust me, God is about justice. It doesn't matter who's he, Protestant, Catholic, it doesn't matter. Don't throw stones at those poor people. You go to Brazil, you go, what we would do with the Catholic now? We burn them, those are if, if, you know, if false Christians. They are not false Christians. Hello? Hey, CP, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? Pretty good so far. Pretty good so far. I won't complain. Mm, sound fishy for me. <laughs> it sounds fishy. What's, <laughs> what's fishy about it? Uh, you know, someone who don't complain, I mean, what? Are you living in the heaven of Allah? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 you know, you put... You know, you must have like more time since you finished your book or something. Actually, I did not finish yet. I want to do the proofreading. I want to do the proofreading. Actually, I'm not done yet. Uh, almost done, almost uh, soon, but I'm not done yet. No, okay, because uh, over the last since I've talked to you last, I have so many different questions. Uh, let me just get to the last one here now. When you were talking to unmasking, um, you mentioned the pact of Omar, <laughs> and you I mentioned what the pact of Omar, yeah, okay, and um. Uh, somebody put a link to it in the chat, and so I went and read over it. Um, I'm curious about the reasoning for preventing the Christians from buying slaves captured by the Muslims. I'm trying to understand the point of that. Uh, mostly, it's about they are afraid that they will become uh, free uh, to choose their belief and to maybe become Christians. Because most of those slaves are coming from Africa they are African you know mm -hmm. and uh, those African many of them don't have uh, they, are, they are pagan you know, don't have a religion so they are afraid that those slaves if they've been given to the Christians they uh, will embrace Christianity you know uh, we don't really I don't know really the real reason like you can, I cannot really get Get into that and see that this is for sure this is a reason but this is what come to my head I don't know okay okay well there is no there is no real explanation for it but if you think carefully that it says like you should not teach your children about Islam and that means you don't teach your children you don't teach your servant you don't teach anything about Islam so you teach nothing about Islam then uh, but for sure that will not work because uh, the pact of Omar is an order not to do but the Christian they teach their children about Christianity so they are not allowed to teach about Islam but now you have a slave who's coming to you and then you start teaching about Christ and then he became a Christian so that will be okay. something to worry about yeah but but well at least it didn't say in the pact that they were forbidden to have slaves uh, now, the pact on this, at least the document that I read, granted, it may not be fully accurate, but what I read, it said you're forbidden from buying slaves captured by the Muslims. It did not say that you could yeah, not because, have slaves. Because, they, because the only one who sells slaves is the Muslims anyway. Okay. Nobody, nobody, this is their control, everything. The market is, is the market is slavery. Who is the one? How the Christians, they will get slaves anyway? How they will, how, how they will capture them they capture people from war they capture them okay. by the sword you know the word capture is capture it's okay, me and there was nobody else to buy slaves from. yeah even in Europe even like now like the, the, the ancestor of the African American they are bought by the white man in Europe by from who from the Arab Muslims they capture them the Arab of North Africa they are the one who captured the slaves 
sell them in the market of slavery to Europe from Europe to America as simple as that the European are not the one who captured the slaves it was the Arab right. you know so they are in okay. charge and actually until now uh, uh, go right now sir today to, uh, to this day as we speak 2018 uh, uh, April 19 search for uh, abusing yeah. Arabian uh, uh, African uh, uh, captured in Libya in Tunisia in Algeria uh, in Morocco yeah. you know now as we speak yeah, this is I not saw that. yeah, yeah I, this is now a months ago. last year two years ago three years ago it's the same all those poor refugee black African trying to come from Eritrea Ethiopia etc they have to go to North Africa which is Islamic land what happened to them the Muslims they trap them you know they they mm -hmm. hide between rocks for them in the road and then they come with their guns they take them the women for sex slaves and the, the men they make them work for them and the boys they rape them too so this has happened today nothing changed the first war the first war happened between USA and any country in the world it was between USA and Libya yeah the you know Barbary pirates. Yeah, yeah what 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 they are they are pirate what pirate mean what pirate mean pirate they jump over your ship they take your goods they enslave mm -hmm. the people and in the best scenario they ask for ransom until now they are doing the same yeah I remember reading about that and um Oh, I've forgotten who the American was, but in any event, he asked him why they did it. And they just told him outright, you know, well, <laughs> you're not Muslim, so we have the right to do it. <laughs> yeah, we are Muslims, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, people, they, they, they want to see history. This is the, the, the nature of this religion is the same. doesn't matter. 2,000, uh, 1,400 years ago or today, right. nothing changed. Right, they just it says what it says. It's just that's it. You know, it, it's, it is law. It is lawful to take the money of non-Muslim. This is why for them, they don't go piracy over uh, ship owned by Muslims. You see, the right. piracy, the piracy always happen against ship. Th this is what they do. Uh, uh, think about it. They let us say even there is a Saudi ship passing by to Somalia, through like close to the uh, seashore of Somalia. Hmm. The ship run by Filipinos. The captain is from France. The engineers are from Denmark. Uh, you know, the business of uh, sea, uh, sea business, they bring experts from everywhere. And always they seek uh, high quality uh, from all kinds of jobs. So it's very well known that number one country who produce, let us say, is cheap labor and high quality of normal labor is Filipinos. So you can hire a Filipino for a very cheap price, you know? And then mm -hmm. the captain will be from a country which is uh, a trustworthy uh, uh, of their education system to trust him to, to drive the, the ship. So he will be from England, he will be from... Uh, uh, from Denmark, he will be from Finland, he will be from whatever. So the whole team in the ship, even if the ship is owned by a Saudi Muslim, the ship is not a Muslim ship for them. The target, still they will kidnap non-Muslims. You know? This is why you okay. see always when they kidnap, they don't kidnap Muslims. Like when the last time we heard that the pirate, they kidnap Muslims. They don't. They, uh, they kidnap yeah. they kidnap <laughs> foreigners who they are not Muslims if you go if you go and see the pirate in in Malaysia the pirate they are very well known they attack resort in the Philippines in Malaysia and they kidnap Abu Sayyaf this is the this is the name of the group Abu Sayyaf when they capture someone that one you never heard of it you better go and search you know <laughs> look CP look I can't keep up with all the Muslim groups yeah, the star attacks. I but, mean, but no, but um, those, those are very famous pirate groups. You know, this is what they do. They do for a living. They are mujahideen. They are mujahideen. But what do what they do to make money is piracy, and they kidnap people and ask for ransom. So when they kidnap, they don't keep Muslims. They kidnap only non-Muslims. They kidnap Muslim only. This is what they do. When they kidnap mm -hmm. you, when they kidnap you, let us say even your name is Muhammad and you are a Muslim. They ask you to recite Al-Fatiha and pray. If you do not mm -hmm. know how to pray and know how to recite Al-Fatiha, they will keep you. Mm -hmm. 
that's mean you are a Muslim by name and you deserve to be a slave okay so okay. if you are even a Christian and you claim to be a Muslim and you know how to recite Al-Fatiha you know how to pray they will let you go <laughs> <laughs> you know if you have no document with you and nothing to prove that you are a Christian but you know how to pray you know like you have um, good, good knowledge about Islam they will let you go mm -hmm. you know? yeah well yeah. yeah well I understand that I mean um well like I said I haven't heard of those guys but I'm not surprised you know um I was just seeing in the news um, a couple of weeks ago Boku Haram uh, kidnapped some girls from another school in Nigeria they still haven't found all the girls from the last school that they attacked but you know what can you do you just can't keep up with all of them so but with that said CP um I, I'm not want to take up all of your afternoon Thank I just you. had that question and I wanted to ask it before we moved on to other topics. No problem, my friend. Thank you for calling. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Take care. Good day. All right. Do we have any Muslim here? Last call. Last call. Mayday. Mayday. Do we have any Muslim on a call us? Do we have any Muslim? All right. Look like we are done for the Muslims today. Uh, uh, Look like we are out of them Anyway guys if you are a person who really love a Christ you love your brother in Christ For even he told us to love even our enemy So it's going to be a very hypocrite of us If we cannot love each other and forget about the name of the church we go to Catholic Protestant Orthodox they believe in one God that name is the Messiah You have differences that will not change anything you don't agree with them that will not change anything you want to correct them correct them but don't throw rocks and don't say you go to heaven you go to hell no 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 we, we, we are we are shut down for today call sorry I will take your call tomorrow so don't don't do that this is what the Muslims do I am sinner you see me I am a sinner man so if if somebody I, I think he don't he don't he don't hear me if somebody if somebody think uh, Muhammad Ahmad uh, we have a call from Muhammad Ahmad hold on let us see Muhammad Ahmad The call from Muhammad Ahmad. I don't know if he's. Yeah, no, he's not answering. Okay, he called me. This guy Muhammad Ahmad, but looked like I missed it. Anyway, uh, anyway, all of us we commit sin, and all of us we do wrong. And if we think that because I am I am a person who do wrong, uh, or the person who do wrong, he will go to hell, then none of us can go to heaven, none of us. So let us say there's a group of Christians, we don't agree with some they do. But the important is, do they agree with us about who is their God, who is the Savior? Do they agree that there is a Father and Son and Holy Spirit? Do they agree that the Messiah is the Word of God who became a flesh? Do they agree there is no salvation but Jesus? They agree. The left is what? They have a picture? They have a picture? That will not make them bad people. That will not make them not Christians. Because for them they think that this is the right way, but it's not because they love pictures, but because they love God. So if they have something wrong, that will not make them bad. Even the wrong they do because they are good people who love God. Leave that between them and their Lord. You can correct them. You can say this is not right. For me, I don't believe that we should have idols or statues. That's very wrong. But still, that will not make them bad people. 
all of us we break the commands of God all of us at least those people they aren't breaking a command to do bad they are breaking command because they love God so we have to be smart and we have to be people who have the heart of Christ the heart of loving and the heart of helping so when I speak to someone who's a Catholic I don't agree with him but I love that he is a believer in Jesus and he believed that the only salvation for him is the Messiah and he have too much love to Jesus maybe more than me so who am I to put him down who am I to say to him you will not go to heaven you will go to hell those people who do that they have a short of understanding Christianity there's some they are good Christian too but they do that too because they didn't understand Christ Christ he accepted the women she was a prostitute you know what prostitute mean prostitute if a prostitute she was able to be forgiven but sadly a human being sometime he liked to be the same as the cave time people the Muslims they throw rocks at each other they want to kill each other they want to suicide each other they want to throw the, the they want to cut the throat of each other you go you watch someone like James White he loved to defend Islam and attack the Catholic for he's a false Christian I'm not a Catholic but that will not change the fact that the Catholic are my brothers and sisters in Christ and they love Christ and they worship him all those names will not count for him the Messiah he said not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so you are a Catholic or a Protestant you are an Orthodox you don't do the will of Christ he will say to you stay away from me I do not know you he will not ask you what church you go to he don't ask you who is your bishop the one who do the will of my father and the first will of my father you know when they asked Jesus how to pray he said pray like this our father out of heaven and then right away he said forgive to us the same as we forgive to others so you cannot earn forgiveness in Christianity unless you forgive first in order to earn forgiveness you have to forgive the Lord he says to you why I want to forgive to you if you cannot even forgive yourself what people did to you why you want me to forgive to you or forgive you when you yourself cannot forgive you don't deserve forgiveness so the first class we learn from the Messiah that we should forgive in order to be forgiven so if your brother in Christ he did something wrong even if it's against you forgive so you might be forgiven you are not doing him a favor <laughs> you are not doing him a favor because you will not be forgiven unless you forgive you are doing a favor to yourself and actually even science prove that forgiveness is the best medicine even if you don't believe in God for people who live with their hate they die with it they die fast hate is like a poison you think you are putting it to someone but the fact you are the one who eat it it's killing you so forgiveness is one of the major practice of a Christianity this is why you see our Lord the Messiah when he was on the cross he was saying to the father forgive them father they do not know what they are doing imagine someone in the cross he is asking the father to forgive those who they are killing him in the moment they are torturing him in that moment and he is he is worried about them forgive them father they don't know what they are doing so can you be even just little close to Christ Christ who forgive people who they are crucifying him you cannot forgive people just because they are they have a picture and you start throwing rocks at them and they are pagan and they are filthy this is not a true be Christian or you are no one and to be Christian is to forgive and to love 
and if you want to correct somebody correct him in the right way you see sometimes people they say to me you are harsh with the Muslims because Islam made Muslims harsh people I have to speak to them in their language otherwise their mentality is different they think when you are nice and kind they think you are weak actually the Quran says that the Quran says that Allah he curse us and he made us nice you believe it it is a curse but the fact this is false the Christian since Christ they became nice kind loving for this is the way to be a follower of Christ Christ himself he said I am here I came to be a servant you see the Muslim don't understand how God can be a man he came to be a servant as a best example for mankind he said to them if you don't let me wash your feet to his apostles and if you don't do what I do you don't belong to me so in Christianity your Lord he wash feet but today what we see an arrogant people not only they don't want they don't want to wash the feet of anybody they don't want to serve anyone they want to throw rocks money power fame authority you name it and then suddenly we play that we are the good ones and everybody around us is dirty all of us if you don't have a mirror go get one hmm? go speak to yourself and see how many sin you did maybe today Christianity is against hypocrisy no good but God if any of us claim to be good he is a liar no man is good save God that is Jesus this is why Jesus said why you call me good and you know that God is good which means how you know that I am God that's why he called himself I am the good shepherd so if you are the good shepherd go and throw your stones but the good shepherd himself he did not throw stones when they brought him a woman she committed adultery he did not throw a stone and he is the good shepherd I advise people to read the Bible from time to time so you can earn the spirit of Christ keep it with you because staying away from it for long will make you dry have you ever leave a piece of bread out in the table for a few hours and try to come back and to eat it is going to be dry like a rock this is what happened to our heart when we stay away from the Word of God this is the only way to keep your heart from being dry from being aggressive hateful jealous be true human and the true human is God he created us with heart to love each other those who teach hate the vision they don't serve Christ in the front of us the verse in the Quran saying that Allah he spread hate and enmity between the Christians entered the judgment day so whoever divide the Christians he is serving Allah you like it or not the plan of Allah is in the front of your eyes Christ if you ask yourself an honest question do Christ like to see the Christians divided I know the answer and you know the answer the answer is no so if you want if you love Christ try to unite the Christians not to divide them and unity is not by casting stones by getting close together loving each other have a nice conversation together and see what is right the same as the Apostles used to send letters to each other if you don't believe me go and read the book of Acts so my you might see how the Christians the true Christians they get into dialogue to see what is right to do I want to say thank you guys for being here and with this I wish you a very pleasant night 
and for the Muslims I say to them I have a wish for you that you were listening and you learned some about the love of Christ which he put in my heart we love you we don't hate you even though your religion taught you hate hate is not for your good and never anything good will come out of hate read the gospel my friend the Muslim and try to compare between the amazing word and wisdom of the Messiah and the mad crazy hateful book it's called the Quran and let me know what you think and I will see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and we see you soon again bye-bye